वेलकम टू इपिजी पाठशाला दिस इज शुभाशीष बंदोपाध्याय एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी शिवपुर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस विथ मॉड्यूल टू सोशल मूवमेंट द स्पेसिफिक टॉपिक ऑफ टूडे इज स्टेट मार्केट एंड सोशल मूवमेंट वेन एवर वी ट्राई टू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस three concepts together normally we think that state come first then come market and as a reaction to these two social movement generated but the story and the reality is just the opposite it was the social movement since the days of renaissance the early part of capitalist development since then a huge array of social movement helped in development of the modern state as we see and know it today that modern statehood generated within its economic activity the industrial market so these three concepts are just like a trinity a triad which cannot be completely separated one from another so it's social movement its state and its the market which combine in a whole body of a complex triad that tries to integrate and at the same time contradict each other's interest whenever the issues began so in this context the state in the modern sense is a capitalist state the social movement is a kind of contribution of nascent motivation of the society to protest against the remnants of the feudal mode of production and to contribute in the development of what we know as the industrial technological market system of today this trinity is a kind of telescopic state where one is inside the other sometimes the two combine to actually antagonize the other or to coerce or to coercively put its stress on the third aspect of the trinity so the point is that here we see a continuous flow of power from one point to the others and vice versa that means a continuous competition of the three domains to actually reign over the other this trinity helps us to understand the stagnation the dynamic flow the culture of society and its productive processes as reflected in the power structure of state and the power structure of the state in turn influences the dynamics of the market and the market reaction generates a pattern of social consolidation in the form of social movement this particular presentation tries to contest the traditional notion that social movement is a reactive force to market and state antagonisms and imposition rather our starting point is that this three has a symbiotic relationship and contribute in the development of the capitalist mode of production or cmp together in different era it's a different story however that this symbiotic relationship over space and time gradually degenerated into some sort of a uh, condescending approach towards segregating social movement as the oppositional force to state and market market 
always striving to force its superiority over state and social movement and state in its turn try to integrate and rule the market and social movements in its favor. So this de degeneration has something to do with the degeneration of the CMP or capitalist mode of production itself. The capitalist mode of production, especially in the context of today, has degenerated to such a plane that the integration through which the initial resurgence of these three institutions evolved is now actually trying to segregate them and putting them as antagonistic forces acting and reacting over each other. Now the definition of the state. The definition of state has manifold issues involved in it. But the most generic and a simple one that it is a geographical and political territory within which a community survives through generations within a spread of local governance, regional governance and national governance with certain kind of sovereignty embedded in the system. This is a generic definition, but there are other sorts of more specific kind of features associated with definitions of Max Weber and say, for example, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Max Weber, state is a human community that legitimately try to exercise force to coerce some of its subjects with a kind of authority as part of a coercive system of political organization. The entire definition put thrust on legitimacy of authority and a coercive feature of state that can be applied within the tradition and within the unfolding of need of the specific community within a specific political organizational context. The interesting feature is that Max Weber, one of the most profound intellectual of the industrial capitalistic system, actually stressed on the feature of coercion and control exercised by the state over its subject for its own ulterior purpose of power motive. From the Marxist perspective, however, the definition of state takes a complete different approach altogether. Here, what Marx tries to project is a system of coercion which is basically a dominant executive force of very specific class interest. So, from the Marxist perspective, state is the executive machinery of a specific class domination in a specific era. Having a class is almost equivalent to having a state. For the purpose of clarity and precision, now I have to read the precise defini definition of state as given by Friedrich Engels, the lifelong ally and friend of Karl Marx. As stated by Friedrich Engels, the state is by no means a power forced on society from without. It is a product of society at a certain stage of development. It is the admission that this society has become entangled in an insoluble contradiction with itself, that it has split into irreconcilable antagonisms between its constituent classes, which it is powerless to dispel. But in order that these antagonisms, these classes with conflicting economic interest might not consume themselves and society in fruitless struggle, it became necessary to have a power 
seemingly standing above society that would alleviate the conflict and keep it within the bounds of order and this power arising out of society but placing itself above it and alienating itself more and more from it is the state. The definition seems to be complex and layered. Indeed it is, but it is the most comprehensive projection and portrayal of the entirety of the state scenario in a most succinct manner because it talks state just not about a class entity but also a tool of alienation and which is embroiled in a self-defeating purpose of generating antagonisms within antagonisms ceaselessly till some forces someday dismantle the intermissionary, abolish the class and with that abolish the state. That in essence reflects on the nuanced, poignant but very essence of the state machinery as it operates within the domain of a class divided capitalist mode of production. In the Marxist sense, the mass of toil, toiling labor, workers, they actually participate in development of the power structure within a broader geographical political entity called state. But what is within the state that compels the worker and the toiling masses to work in a condition where they actually fight for their survival? This is the place which is, is not limited to any geographical territory but within an expansion of huge array of generation of value, exchange value and use value dominated by an overarching labor value produced, reproduced and usurped within the process of broader economic structure. This particular structure with its additional political economic dimension results in the body, bodily operation of market. So in the Marxist sense, market is the epitome of evolution of class interest where players are not operating in isolation or atomistic individual existence. They play together as a class, struggle together to produce or reproduce, extract and exploit. So market is the big arena where the class contradiction takes its sharpest turn. Here the toiling masses produces through their physical and intellectual labor together. But they produce at the pretext of producing for society whereby the capitalist system, capitalist industrial system expropriate surplus of their physical and intellectual labor which is manifested in the commodity production within market. So in an essence this market is a convergent point of all the contradictions within capitalism as a mode of production that shows the sharpness of the antagonistic class relations between the working class and the ruling class of capitalist. In Grundrisse, when Marx was referring to reciprocal compulsion, he was actually showing that within the market sphere, capitalist and the ownership of capital does not operate at the atomistic level of individual ownership of private property, but they as competing entities conflict also generated within the sphere of capitalist production by the capitalist and that's the point where the qualitative aspect of different human productivity are expressed as quantitative ratios 
that is converted into a kind of commodification that commodity compete to grab the market share in favor of its own existence and trying to beat the other capitalist engaged in the market competition for their share. So in itself, it's a continuous regeneration of antagonisms of sorts that compel the market to be divided sharply across class lines rather than group of individuals competing for the benefit of the market mechanism. This sharply divided market scenario, the issues of skewness, distortion and pestilential expression of consumption, overproduction and conspicuousness actually put the entire system of market into a disarray. This disarray generate certain amount of economic, psychological, political disenchantment among the section of the population operating within the market as consumer, as producer, as supplier, and finally, the usurper of all these resources together as a capitalist. But the capitalist are trying to operate in this skewed disposition within the framework of monopoly and oligopoly. That means capital within this marketplace increasingly becoming self-destructive. These generate a reaction, a reaction of political cultural nature often takes shape the form of social movement. So social movement is and has been always a reaction to the disenchantment from the market forces and the state within the system of capitalist mode of production. Within this skewed distribution and allocation of resources in market, especially in a monopolistic or oligopolistic market, the disillusionment takes forms of an awareness, the awareness to collectivize the people together. And this disillusionment get augmented with the development of industrial culture, political identity, rights, urbanization, and especially access to new faces of technology, whereby the issues of the disillusionment spread quickly across the face of the society, consolidate the masses together, and help them to raise the point together to form a massified social movement. So in the process of generation of social movement and within the definition of social movement, the process of urbanization, industrialization, development of science and technology, rights and justice has always been playing important role for definitional aspect of social movement. The dynamic state of social movement within the capitalist system of state and market has to be understood within the context of awareness. But at the same time, we must understand that state and market is not easy alley for social movement. They are opposing forces and they try to stifle the voices of antagonisms as ruthlessly as possible over time. The point is that with the consolidation of the social movement, the varied forms it takes, just not the micro or the local that is involved, but the macro, the larger scenario, the regional issues, the national issues, and the internal issues also provoke social movement. Say, for example, for climate degeneration, people across the world, across the societal communities working together to raise their voice of protest. These protestations are taking place within the ambit of social 
conditioning of political identity but as well as within the pre pretext of market and the precincts of the st state. But the point is that and the important point is that we have to understand all the social movements generated as a kind of flourishing opposition to the domineering tendencies of the market and state have do not always carry a single characteristics. They are divergent, sometimes opposing to each other and definitely have their class orientation. It is important therefore to understand not to brand all the social movement in a big category of unidimensionality but to think about social movement with specific class nature and in diversity and heterogeneity. Now we have the kind of broad understanding of the interfaces between market, state and social movement. It is important that to understand the qualitative shift within this triad, we just not simply enumerate the quantity and the intensity of the existence and the negotiation and the contradiction. But we have to enumerate the sharpness of the oppositional forces that is operating within these interfaces together. In this context, it is important that the movement may be local in nature, but global in appeal. A global movement have an universal appeal, but have more specific utility in a specific region. So we have to understand the dynamics of the movement is not one dimensional. It is multidimensional and at the same time may help to understand the other forms of movement and distinguish some movement from some other. Say for example, reformist movement like uh, reduction in uh, subsidiary in health facility is one thing and which has a kind of very sharp local or national importance. But when you go for a health coverage for universal health program, we must also consider climate and environment as important issue contributing into the issue of good health and sound body and mind. In this context, the environment and climate becomes a ubiquitous apparatus for understanding and regenerating health-based movement across societies. Just like that, water resource-based movement may be local in nature, but global in scope. Issues of political suffrage, idea of justice, women's rights, LGBTQ movement, all these movements may have their local uniqueness, but have also their interconnections with many other distant regions and places from where people may never come in close contact with each other. So a dispersed movement is not necessarily dispersed in terms of quality, only dispersed in terms of the apparent vision. There are interconnectedness within the aspirational charter of the humanity as a whole, especially with the intensification of the technological tools in social media, in mass communication, we can get connected so easily that intensity of the movement may spread from one region to the other very quickly and help in build up a new base with a new objective which is both local and global. Keeping all this view in mind, we may say that we have a triad, a trinity, which are crisscrossing with each other's domain and also influencing and coloring each other. At the same time, the opportunity is right with the possibility that once social movement prevails as a class movement, it may altogether dismantle the existing 
market mechanism and the pestilential state mechanism in favor of a broader, bigger and more developed, more acute form of human civilizational existence with a broader vision of emancipation. With this interface, the triad of state, market and social movement have no separate existence at all. The three of them can only be understood and defined in connections with each other and in context of a global and regional and local dynamics of aspiration of people who are participating in the process to raise their voice above all kind of propaganda and all kind of antagonism exercised by the power milieu that tries to throttle the voice forever. In this context, the social movement within state, the social movement within market, the state within social movement, the state within market, the market within social movement, the market within state requires further calibration and theoretical build-up to get the nuanced view more completely, more pervasively and at a larger global scale together. On the basis of this, we now may conclude the session with a generic understanding of state, market and social movement. The political entity of the supra-organic existence of state is meaningless without having its economic base. The economic base of market have no reflections in the life of people without having another superstructural element of people consolidating across the culture for raising their voice or social movement. And the social movement has no context or matrix if it is not taking place within the boundary and the limit of state and market. So these triad are to be understood inseparably as a symbiotic existence of a lichen where the fungus combines well with the algae and help each other to survive. So, so for the state and the polity, market and its predominant capitalist economy exist, social movement likely to thrive until these two predominantly exploitative system cease to exist till that time new and new form of social existence of social movement would flourish and try to confront and raise new set of questions against this predominant power structure and production structure which try to hegemonize the life of the common people in its shallow and so-called normal existence. Thank you very much.